The photos that you see on screen at the moment suffer from a common problem, and that is overexposure. And if you have photos like that, don't worry, because I've got two excellent techniques to share with you that will allow you to recover your highlights. But first, let's take a quick look at how you can see if your photo is genuinely overexposed and which of those pixels are blown out. So here I have a series of deliberately overexposed photos of my pets. And if we open up one of these and we jump into the edit section, it loads up the raw file and straight away we can see the histogram here on the right hand side. And that is the best way to judge if our photo is overexposed or not. I'm going to open up the develop raw section here so that I can actually grab the exposure slider and watch what happens to the histogram as I bring that down. You can see that all of the data in the graph now falls inside of this box. And ideally when you're starting your photo editing, that's what you want to see. But if I double click to reset this, you can see that the right hand side of the graph here is actually disappearing outside of this bounding box. And that means that we are losing information in our photo. So just to make that a little clearer, I'm gonna brighten this up even more and you can see that as our cat blows out to pure white, you're seeing this huge spike on the right and that's basically telling us that we have so much data that is now being lost outside of our photographic visual spectrum. So basically what the histogram is showing us are the brightness values in our photo with the shadows and the blacks being on the left hand side and the highlights and the whites being on the right hand side. And we want that data that is inside of our photo to be falling inside of that bounding box of the histogram. So just to make that super clear, if I grab the exposure slider again, if we boost that all the way to the right hand side, you can see that the photo has gone nuclear. We've gone pure white and you can see, you can tell that that histogram is disappearing off to the right hand side, far too bright. Conversely, if I bring it down to the left hand side, everything's getting darker there, everything's getting bunched up at the bottom, but now we're pushing everything into black. But as I double click the exposure to reset it where it was, there's actually a quicker and easier way to see straight away if you've blown out the highlights, and that is to press the J key on your keyboard, and there you go straight away, we can see those red highlight warnings are saying you have no information whatsoever in this area of the photo. And that is bad juju. And I'll grab the exposure slider again and push that up. You can see again, we've lost all that information in the cat. And conversely, again, if I bring this all the way down, any pixels that have now hit pure black are represented by those bright blue pixels. So that's a really easy way to see whether you're losing information in the very brightest part of your photo or the very darkest part. And before you start your edit, we don't want either of those things to be happening. So if we've lost our highlights, what are we gonna do about it? Well, there's a couple of things we can do. Let's work on this photograph here, jump into the edit section again, and as a Kickstarter, let's press the J key and we can see all of those red highlight warnings saying you've got no information here, Anthony. So I'm gonna jump into the develop raw section and that's where we want to be starting every one of our edits. And if you don't see develop raw, the likelihood is you're either working on a JPEG file or a TIFF, um, or you've already applied another tool. And once you've done that, you won't see develop raw anymore. So for example, you know, I was messing around with develop raw. However, if I came in and I changed the setting on another tool, so enhance AI, I cracked in a load of that all of a sudden you will now see we don't have develop raw anymore. It's changed, it is just develop. And you might not think that's a big deal, but it is, you want access to all of the raw data initially so that we can set that histogram correctly. So don't worry if you have applied a tool and you think, oh, I need to get back to develop raw. It still exists in the edits tab. You will still see it down here, accessible, develop raw. So we can come back here and make our corrections. So providing we are using a raw file, usually we can recover the highlights by bringing the exposure down. The raw file holds a lot of information that we don't necessarily see at first glance. However, I don't wanna just drop the exposure on this photo and you might not want to either. So the first place you want to come to recover your highlights is, well, of course, the highlights slider. So if I drop that down, we can now see that we've brought all of this information and detail back into the cat's face, into the cat's fur, 
And while that's great to recover those highlights, it does look a little bit washed out and then you're gonna to need to come in and start playing with the other sliders and try and get the photo looking where you want it. And as you can see, we still don't have a whole lot of detail in the cat's fur, despite dropping the highlight slider all the way down to negative 100. And as you can see in the histogram, all the information that represents the highlights and the whites is clearly all within that bounding box. So the fact that the highlights in the cat don't look that great at the moment, it's a little bit disappointing. So what else can we do? Well, that's where method two comes in. It's a more robust method for bringing back the highlights. Let me show you that one. So I wanna zoom back out and jump into the catalog section here. And what I want to do as a direct comparison is work on the same photo. These two look the same, but they are actually different. So what I'm actually gonna do is duplicate this photo. So the easiest way to do that is to go show in Explorer, and I'm just gonna press Control C on my keyboard, Control V to paste a copy. And one of the things I really love about Luminar Neo versus Lightroom, for example, is automatically it's synchronized with what's going on in Windows. And so now I have that copy available to me. So this time what I'll do is grab our cat photo, click, hold and drag that into the HDR merge section in the plus icon. Now, when I click merge, Luminar Neo is going to do some calculations on one single file. And there you go, we have a pretty rough and ready HDR version of the cat photo. Now, while I don't like the look of this photo overall, you cannot argue the fact that it's certainly brought back all of the detail in the cat. It's also brought back all of the detail in the shadows behind it as well. And that's one of the reasons I don't really like this overall look. But what I wanna do is steal the highlight information, like look at all the fur detail around here. That's so much better than what we were getting when we were just using the highlight recovery slider. So what we're gonna do is go back to the catalog and I'm gonna grab this and just move it into the same folder. So I'll put that in my overexposed examples and now that exists next to the unprocessed raw photo. So what I'm gonna do is just open up the raw photo and I'll just do a quick edit on this to get it looking pretty much how I want it, but without too much regard for the highlights. If we pull the highlights all the way down, yes, we're recovering that detail like we did last time, but it's just a bit washed out. So I'm just gonna tickle in a bit of the highlights. And for this photo, I'm gonna bring down the shadows because I just wanna darken down that background, make him a little more contrasty and impactful, and even bring that black point down just a little bit further. And let's just press that J key just to make sure that we're not clipping anything. And I'm just gonna get that to a point where we just start to see a few blue pixels there. That's all good, right. But of course, the thing that's missing for us is information and detail in the fur here. You can see that the back half of the cat is just pretty much a big white blob. If I was to zoom in on this and you didn't know that was a cat, you'd have no idea what that was whatsoever. So now this part is where we're going to leverage the HDR file that we created before and create a kind of hybrid of the two, the best bits of both photos. And we do that by adding the HDR photo as a new layer. So I'll come to the layer section, click the plus icon, and this is my HDR version. It's loaded it just as an option in the panel at the moment. I just need to click that and that will then get loaded over the top of my cat. Now currently we see it at 50% opacity, just like any layer that we bring in in Luminar Neo, that is the default. So if I crank this all the way to 100, we see our HDR version only. And as I reduce that, we see the edited raw version underneath. So how can we combine the two of those? Well, the simplest way is just to use the opacity slider and say, you know what? I'm pretty happy with that as a combination of the two. Half of one, half of the other. Not bad, but I think we can do better. And one approach we can do is use masking. And the particular mask that could come in really handy for this is luminosity masking, because that allows us to control where we see that HDR layer, or any layer for that matter, based on the brightness values in the photo, which is exactly what we want. We want to reveal it only in the brightest areas of the photo. So let me show you how we do that. I'm gonna to come to the masking section over here, come into luminosity, and now as I drag this slider in from the left-hand side, you can see we make this bounding box tighter, and the pixels that match this brightness value inside of this box 
are the same pixels which will end up being masked in. And so what we want to do is just make sure that that kind of ready pink mask representation just falls over the top of those highlight areas. Now, currently it's a very abrupt transition. There's no smoothing. So what we need to do is drag this little triangle here at the bottom left-hand corner and start dragging that out. And what that's going to do is include more of those darker pixels. And so we get a transition zone from the dark pixels to these intermediate pixels, 0% of the layer here, 100% here and everything above. And so the tighter we make this and the wider we make this transition, the smoother that look is going to be. So if we come out of this luminosity mask now, you can see that we have reintroduced all of that detail. We've got all of that lovely fur back in the highlights as well, and it's done it in quite a nice tasteful way as well. So if I come over here, we can just hide this layer and we can see our original. And now as I show the layer, we've got a much nicer combination of the two. But to be honest, I think our fine feline friend right here, that was good alliteration, deserves more than that. And we can make that mask better and more refined, not just by using that luminosity mask, but by combining that with the brush tool so we can paint it in with a little bit more precision, but on top of what we've already created here with that luminosity mask. So let me show you how I do that. Well, first of all, what I'd like to do is just crank that opacity back up to 100 so that I know that I'm going to be able to get the maximum effect of that HDR where I want it. So we'll jump back into the masking section, come to brush. Having the strength set somewhere around 20 is pretty good, making sure we're nice and soft, maximum amount there. And I'm going to click once. Yeah, so currently we're on the erase mode so that I know... Anywhere I paint, I'm going to be taking that HDR effect away. And what I might do is put that a little bit higher just for now so that I can clear out the background pretty quickly. I could use the background removal AI tool, but for this instance, I'm just going to stick with a brush. Sometimes I just like and prefer that more manual hands-on approach to my editing. So you can see things are looking a little bit weird on the cat here. And again, that comes down to that transition between the bright and the dark pixels. So it's sometimes good just to paint it in a little bit more. And I really love all the detail that we're revealing back around his neck here. However, it's a little overdone on his face. That's too much of that HDR look. So let's jump to the erase tool, bring the strength down and just have a little paint over his face here. Just anywhere that you think the effect might just be a little bit too strong, you can just paint it away. Okay, let's have a toggle of our original, our overexposed blown out photo, and then release. And look at all that detail we've brought back. So let's zoom in here so we can really see that area that was just overexposed, very bright, no detail, and then bammo, we've brought all of that detail back. But if you still feel that it's just a little bit too over the top and perhaps it is but you know sometimes it's good to just go a little heavy-handed for these videos so that you can clearly see what's going on but you've always got that option to jump back into the properties section grab the overall opacity amount and just bring that back down so now we've got our before and our after before and after really like that the only real drawback with this method is if you want to carry on your edit and i suggest that normally you would do what you need to do is actually flatten this down so that any tools that you apply to this photo now don't just affect the layer that is selected, which is what would happen if we work on it like this. You want it to affect the photo as a whole. So what we need to do is actually collapse this down into one single editable photo. So what we want to do is export this photo by right clicking, come to export, and I'll send it to the same catalog location. I'm going to use a TIFF format, which will give me the option for maximum quality by saving in the color space Adobe RGB and also making sure that my bit depth is not eight, but 16. And once that's exported, we see a photo that looks identical to the original. However, it doesn't have the little icon in the top left, which represents that there are edits applied to this photo. This one is a completely flat photo without any edits applied. So anything that we apply now will affect the photo as a whole, which is exactly what we want. And then of course you can get creative with Luminar Neo and take the photo in any direction you like. In this one, I just cleaned up the background a little bit and brought a little more attention to the cat by using a tilt shift blur. 
And from there, I did my favorite thing at the moment, which is to introduce some of those painterly textures just to give a bit more of an artistic quality to the photo. Also for a limited time, I've got 80% off my entire texture bundle collection. So if you wanna get hold of that as well, check out the link in the description below. And if you wanna see how you can add textures to your photos as well, I'd recommend checking out that video there where I do a deep dive into applying textures. Thanks so much for watching guys. I hope this has been helpful for you. If it has, leave me a like, leave me a comment and feel free to share this with someone else you think might benefit. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye for now.